Hey, you could have watched this video a day early. Check out my Patreon for more details. Hello! If you're watching this video, that means that you are interested in switching to Linux. Maybe you heard about it from this new Steam Deck device that's been rumored to come out soon. Maybe you're sick and tired of having Windows or Apple stick their dirty fingers inside all your precious data. Or maybe you're just looking to shake things up, maybe try something new. Whatever the reason may be, you came to the right place. See, the problem I've noticed with a whole lot of Linux videos is that most of the time they take the perspective of a developer or an IT professional or someone who already knows how all of this stuff works. But you and me, we're not like that. We're just simple gamers. And the only things that we want to do are game, consume content, and maybe do maybe do a little bit of Twitch streaming. Just 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 a little, just a little bit. So I'm here to tell you the pros and the cons of switching to Linux from the perspective of a gamer and content creator. First thing you gotta understand about Linux is that it is free and open source. What does that mean? Well, sit tight, I'll tell ya. Free and open source essentially means that whatever Linux distribution you decide to run on your computer will be free of any monetary cost. And open source basically means that all the code is available for everyone to gawk at. There are no secrets when it comes to Linux. Now this whole open source thing might not be entirely interesting to you, but it breeds this community of people who value transparency in their code and making sure that that code and that software is just good and available to anybody who wants it. There are no corporate or monetary gains behind a lot of these projects. Looking at you, Streamlabs. And that transparency and open source nature of Linux also allows for a great deal of privacy. Now you might think to yourself, well, wouldn't all that transparency and openness with the software, wouldn't that actually hurt privacy on the consumer space? Well, here's the thing. If anybody can go and look at your program's code, they'll be able to tell if you're shipping data off to any suspicious locations, like what Microsoft and Apple do all the time. It's much harder to hide that kind of crap when anybody can look at your software and say, hey, this is doing some shady business. Let's just not use it. And that also means you're not going to need to sign up for any services or accounts or any of that garbage like you got to do on Windows. So you don't need to wrestle with any of your Microsoft information if you want to do any minor thing on your system. The system you own. Or at least the one that you should own. And gaming on Linux? Pfft. Don't even get me started. That shit is so easy. Thanks to the efforts of the open source community and <laughs> Valve, we're able to play pretty much any game just as easily and just as smoothly as we could on Windows. However, there are a good number of online games that just aren't there yet. And that has nothing to do with the game itself. It has everything to do with the anti-cheat of the game. So games like Apex Legends or PUBG or Valorant, none of those games are going to work. So if you enjoy those games and you play those a lot, well, I mean, the next downside, and this is coming from personal experience, is that content creation can be a little tougher. Now there's plenty of free and open source and even enterprise software that's fully available on Linux right now. In fact, if you want a better breakdown of that, you can go check out this video right here where I talk about all the different pieces of software that I use to make my videos. But I've run into a couple snags that have been a bit annoying. The biggest hurdle that I foresee a lot of you running into is that Adobe software just isn't available and it probably never will be. Now, I personally feel like this is a blessing in disguise because Adobe sucks, but I recognize that there are people out there who have to use Adobe for one reason or another. So just something I got to point out. There's plenty of alternative softwares that you can use that are available on both Linux and Windows. And I suggest you switch to those first just to make your eventual transition to Linux that little bit easier. I mean, that's what I did, and this entire channel is run entirely off Linux. And the final downside that we have to talk about here is that Honestly, you'll just need to change up how you use your PC. These three operating systems may appear similar on the surface, but if you're trying to do anything relatively high level, like video editing, they're gonna act entirely differently. So just like you would need to change up how you use your computer if you wanted to switch from Mac to Windows or vice versa, you're gonna need to do the same thing when you switch from Windows to Linux. There will be a learning curve, and that just takes time. So don't just ditch Windows right away as soon as you switch to Linux. Give yourself a little bit of a buffer. Start experimenting with Linux. Maybe throw it on a spare hard drive or an old laptop you haven't booted up in a few years or any spare hardware you just happen to have laying around. But if you've watched this entire video and you still think it's worth it, I applaud you. I applaud your tenacity. 
because the more people that we have using Linux, the less of a stranglehold Microsoft has on PC gaming in general. I don't like how powerful Microsoft is getting. I don't like how much stuff they own. That's very unnerving to me. So, you know, let's knock them down a couple pegs by switching to Linux. Hey, you actually made it to the end. Thank you for watching. Really means a lot. At the end of this video, I want to go ahead and thank my patrons or the executive lads. They uh, help fund these videos and make them possible. If you want to be a patron yourself, you can go ahead and follow the link in the description or the one that'll show up on the screen shortly, where you'll gain access to videos a whole day early, special behind the scenes content, and just bonus content in general that will not show up anywhere else. For this week's bonus video, I'm just going to go ahead and pull out all my GameCube games and take a look at my collection, do a little uh, collection showcase. Because I love that little purple lunchbox, and man, just, there's so many great games to talk about on the GameCube, uh, and I feel like that would be, that'd be an exciting topic to go over uh, for the for the bonus content, for the patrons. If that sounds interesting to you, hey man, all you gotta do is pay $1 and you gain access to all the bonus content. Thank you again for watching, thank you again to my patrons, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.